During this training session, you will learn the safety rules and work guidelines, which will enable you to work on distribution lines energized to 7200 volts phase to ground. You have received a copy of the company's rubber glove manual to use as a reference during this training session. This manual contains much of the information you will receive during this session and all of the answers to the exam you will take at the end. After a period of classroom instruction, you will spend considerable time in the pole yard becoming familiar with new equipment and practicing the application of this work method. You are about to invest several days to become qualified in this work method. To verify your qualification, you will need to successfully pass a written exam and a field evaluation by your instructors. Many of you have been gloving 4160 for several years and some of you may have come from other utilities and gloved higher voltages. Much of what you learn during this training session are guidelines and will allow you great flexibility. There are, however, some rules that must be followed. These will be made very clear as the session progresses. Once you have learned to apply these rules, you will find that they require very little time and effort, and you will appreciate the higher level of safety they provide. You may find that many of these methods will naturally spill over into the 4160 gloving work. As with any work method, each employee should remember that it is their responsibility to follow safe work practices and to see that others do the same. It is the intent of this training to provide Montana Power linemen with a tool that will increase safety and performance. The rubber gloving method will not replace the hot stick method as both have productive applications in the field. You will return to your division with a tool that you are able to use as a crew of qualified linemen. The size of your crew will be determined by the existing IBEW contract. In the field, the crew will determine if the rubber gloving method is the best method to apply to the task. The foreman does have the authority to overrule and decide not to use the rubber gloving method if the job cannot be completed safely, in which case the hot stick method may be used or the line be de-energized. Rule number one, always incorporate, insulate, and isolate. All rubber glove work on 7200 volts phase to ground will be completed using the principle of insulate and isolate. Next to wearing your gloves, practicing the principle of insulate and isolate is the most important protection you will have while performing this work method. Quite simply, you will be insulated by your rubber gloves and other rubber cover-up. You will also be isolated by either the boom of an approved aerial device or an insulated platform. For this reason, you must cover any path to ground that the bucket could brush against and short circuit the boom. Or if working on an insulated platform, you must avoid passing tools to a man on the pole while in contact with a phase. By incorporating the principle of insulate and isolate, you will have two levels of protection from any path to ground or phase differential. This rule should never be violated. Due to the various configurations of distribution equipment in the field, you may need to consider the following recommended work method combinations. Two qualified employees on an aerial lift or two qualified employees on an insulated platform. One qualified employee on an insulated platform and one in an aerial lift. One qualified employee in an aerial lift and one employee with hot sticks on the pole. Although not recommended for common practice because it is easy to violate the isolate portion of the method, there may be times when one qualified employee on an insulated platform and an employee with hot sticks on the pole is appropriate. An approved aerial device will have a sticker at the lower controls that indicates that it is approved for rubber gloving, insulate, and isolate. There will also be a sticker at the lower controls that indicates the boom has passed the dielectric test within the year. Check to make sure these stickers are in place. Rule number two, always use fall protection. During this session, you will practice installing a baker board or insulated platform on a pole. 
There are various sizes of boards available. Weight and whether they swivel can make a big difference in the field. If an insulated platform is to be used with this work method, additional care must be taken to provide adequate fall protection and not violate the insulate and isolate principle. To accomplish this, the lineman on the insulated platform must wear a harness with a back D-ring attached to a lanyard that is attached to an insulated fall arrest device at the pole. In practice, this method is not overly cumbersome and compensates for some of the unsettled feeling of working off the platform. Note that gloves and sleeves were installed before the lineman climbed onto the board. Rule number three, always test your gloves. The company has provided you with class two rubber gloves and sleeves. These are rated for use up to 17,000 volts phase to ground. When working with these gloves, you should test them at least each morning and after lunch. Testing can be accomplished by rolling the cuff and trapping air inside. The sound of escaping air is an obvious indication that the glove has failed. However, wind can make this indication difficult. A close inspection should be made of the surface for any defects. If any yellow is showing through the black, the glove shall be replaced. Another method of testing in the field is by trapping water inside the glove. Fill the glove with water up to the wrist and fold the cuff over to trap air inside. Very small leaks that cannot be detected with air can be detected with this method. Whatever test method you use, do not overstretch the rubber to expose the color beneath. This is unnecessary and will damage the glove. Once the glove is dry, ensure that you use a powder that does not contain a petroleum product that could degrade the dielectric properties of the glove. It should be noted that rings, watches, and necklaces can increase the danger of shock if a fault occurs and should not be worn. Your gloves and sleeves are your best friend in the field and you want to treat them accordingly. Never put them away wet and always put the gloves in their bag with the cuff down. Sleeves should be rolled and never folded. The company provides leather protectors for the gloves. Be sure that these are replaced if they get worn or cut. Gloves will be returned to the rubber lab and dielectrically tested every three months. You must return your gloves and sleeves for these tests. Failure to return gloves and sleeves causes a shortage of gloves in the company pool and could lead to positive discipline. In addition to gloves and sleeves when using this work method, employees shall wear company supplied clothing, hard hats, and safety glasses with side shields. This protective equipment will be very important if an arc occurs close to the employee working on the energized line. Rule number four, always inspect other rubber goods before applying them. As dirt and oil can cause the rubber to break down or arc over, all rubber goods should be kept clean. At the work site, rubber goods should never be laid on the ground but sorted for easy access on a clean tarp or work directly out of the bins of a truck. After each use, rubber goods should be cleaned, inspected, and dried. Rubber blankets are sent into the rubber lab and dielectrically tested every six months. A stamp in the corner will indicate a current test. Rubber blankets should never be folded for storage, but rolled or laid flat. The folds create stresses in the rubber that eventually cause the rubber to break down. Line hose is dielectrically tested every year. Line hose should never be stored bent or left in the bottom of a bucket bent. This causes damaging stresses and makes the hose difficult to glide onto the wire. Rule number five, always keep the boom of the aerial device clean. A clean boom is essential to maintaining the isolate portion of this work method. Dirt and oil on the surface of the boom can conduct electricity. Each crew should ensure that they wash the boom at least once a week. Do not use abrasive cleaners as these remove the fiberglass finish. Also, thoroughly rinse the detergent off the boom. This is important as all detergents have surfacants in them that cause water beads to run together. The surfacant improves the cleaning power of the detergent, but to reduce tracking, we want water on the clean boom to bead, so all detergent must be rinsed off. 
if maintenance work is performed on an aerial device that could affect the insulating qualities of the boom, the boom shall be dielectrically tested before being returned to service. When not in use, the bucket shall be covered to keep water and debris out of the bucket. Rule number six. Always have a tailboard before each job and if the job changes. Tailboard should be used to evaluate the worksite conditions and potential hazards from traffic or terrain. The weather should be evaluated, electrical hazards should be identified, and the job sufficiently detailed so that each man knows what is to be covered up, how conductors will be controlled, and who will do what. This is a good time to check gloves and other safety equipment, including safety glasses and clothing. There is a sample tailboard checklist in the back of the gloving manual for your use. Rule number seven, always ground the truck whenever possible. When working from an approved aerial device, the truck should be grounded if possible to the best available ground. This practice is for the protection of the public and employees on the ground. Care should be taken that extra ground wire is not coiled up on the ground and is sufficiently removed from the work area so as not to cause a trip hazard. Placing the ground wire away from the overhead work usually accomplishes both. If the truck cannot be grounded, then it must be barricaded from the public. Rule number eight. Always work only on one phase at a time. When utilizing the rubber glove method, only one phase shall be worked at a time. All other phases and paths to ground shall be covered if within the contact area or if there is a possibility of brush contact with the lineman or the bucket. Rules 9 and 10. Always have rubber gloves and sleeves on before entering the contact area or before climbing onto the insulated platform. Rubber gloves will always be worn with sleeves. The class 2 sleeves have a yellow inside. Sleeves like gloves are molded products and therefore have molecular memory. When a sleeve or a glove is worn inside out, the memory is stressed, which contributes to the breakdown of the rubber. Therefore, sleeves and gloves should never be worn inside out, even though the rubber color is cooler in the summer. The contact area is easiest understood as an imaginary sphere around the exposed portion of the energized line that is being worked. As a lineman nears an energized line, OSHA has established the approach distance. For 7,200 volts phase to ground, the approach distance is 25 inches. To approach nearer than 25 inches, the energized line must be covered with appropriate insulation. This can be done either with a hot stick or with rubber gloves and sleeves. Once the conductor is covered, the approach distance disappears. To work on a portion of the energized line, the lineman removes the insulation. As he does so, the contact area appears. Contact area is defined by a sphere around the work area that has a radius of at least 25 inches. This area may be expanded to cover the swing radius of tools that are used on the exposed phase. Within this area, all paths to ground or phase differential must be covered. Also, within this area, sleeves and gloves are required. Notice that the neutral and any surface outside the contact area that could be brushed by the body or the bucket are also covered while the phase is being worked. This ensures that the boom will not be short-circuited and the lineman lose the isolate portion of his protection. Rule number 11. Always use the link stick between paths to ground or phase differential. Link sticks are to be used to isolate hoists, blocks, and tag lines from paths to ground and phase differential. Several types of link sticks are available and are useful in many applications. Polypropylene rope has excellent dielectric qualities, but will conduct electricity if it is wet or dirty, so always use a link stick. Rule number 12. Always be in control of conductive objects in the contact area. During this training session, practice pinning loose ends, incorporating shotguns, and communicating with partners to control conductive objects in the contact area. Let's quickly review the rules. Number one, always incorporate, insulate, and isolate. Number two, always use fall protection. 
Number three, always test your gloves. Number four, always inspect other rubber goods before applying them. Number five, always keep the boom of the aerial device clean. Number six, always have a tailboard before each job and if the job changes. Number seven, always ground the truck whenever possible. Number eight, always work only one phase at a time. Number nine and 10, always have rubber goods and sleeves on before entering the contact area or climbing onto an insulated platform. Number 11, always use a link stick between paths to ground or phase differential. And number 12, always be in control of conductive objects in the contact area. These rules have been compiled by linemen like yourselves. The intent is to provide you with the safest work method possible. But remember, each morning when you look in the mirror, you are looking at the person who is most responsible for your safety. Thank you.